Hi there guys, it's Sam from Tantrum Kitesurf. Today we're going to be talking about front stalling, what it is and how to avoid it. Front stalling, very simply, is if this is your kite and this is the leading edge here, this hands the wind. Front stalling is when the kite dips so far that the wind hits the front of the kite, the top of the kite, and causes the whole thing to fall down like this. Now it's often called Hindenburg, and it's this horrible sensation. The kite's above your head, and it literally just starts, and literally falls straight on top of your head. It happens very, very slowly, um, but there's not a lot, once it's started to happen, there's not a lot, right, a lot you can do, especially if you're in the water. If you're on the beach, you can try and leg it in the opposite direction as fast as you can, and hope that you catch the kite as it comes down. Um, but in the water, there's very little you can do because you cannot move fast enough. So you've got to avoid it happening in the first place. Now, how do you do that? Well, before we look at how to avoid it, we need to find out what's causing it. What causes the kite to literally to turn so far, to depower, if you think that's depowered so far, that the wind hits the front of it? Well, it can be due to several things. First of all, it can be due to the pilot, to how you are actually flying the kite. Something we see an awful lot, especially in beginners, is that they're very like this on the bar. You know, rather than these, if you look at actually how much like a pro kite surfer moves the bar when they're actually just normally riding, it's very, very little. You know, it's fractional movements generally. Yeah, occasionally they'll do big movements when they're trying to do something specific, but normally the bar's moving a very, very small amount. Compare that with beginners who are. Bar in, ooh, bar in, bar out, ooh, 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 I don't know what I'm doing, all over the place. And what that means is the kite is constantly doing this in the sky. And it's very, very easy when it's doing that, when you've got these big movements on the bar, that you pull the kite too far down and the wind catches the front of it. Now, this is the classic. If you're struggling with this when you're water starting, this is the classic because you'll be, while you're getting the board on your feet, probably the bar's doing this and the kite is zipping all over the place. And you're probably just literally pulling the kite out of the sky is how I tend to think of it. You know, you're changing the angle so dramatically in a very short space of time that the wind hits the front of the kite and the whole thing falls down. So that's probably user error number one. Number two, it can be the kite. All the kites, and especially high aspect kites, will fly very, or could fly very well. High aspect kites will, all the kites, just because they're, they're not designed to withstand that, um, the gusts at the front of the window as much. But high aspect kites, i.e. long, thin kites, tend to sit at the front of the window. Now, obviously, if they sat at the front of the window, they're much closer, they're much more likely that a slight tweak will turn them to have the wind hit the front of it. If the kite's lower aspect, lower aspect kites, i.e. shorter, fatter kites, tend to sit further back in the window. So it's much harder for the wind to catch the top of them. So if you've got a very high aspect kite, a very long, thin kite, especially when you're learning, if you combine a, a high aspect kite with what we talked about in the first one, in the first example of what, what can happen, you can very easily front stall that kite. So another thing, maybe look at your kite. If you've got a high aspect kite, you might want to try a low aspect kite. And certainly if you are learning, if you're a beginner, low aspect kites are the way forward. Now, I'm not gonna go into that now. I've discussed that on another video in the past. Have a check to our YouTube channel, it's somewhere on there. Um, but it's definitely gonna be, make your life much more difficult having a high aspect kite combined with, uh, let's say, um, bad user input, <laughs> one of the better way of putting it, okay? So those two things can combine to make it um, much more difficult. So how do you avoid it? Let's say you have got a high aspect kite, you can't afford a low aspect kite, you are a beginner, so you're doing this a little bit. How do you avoid it? Well, the first thing obviously is don't move the bar so much, that's quite obvious. The other thing is, the other thing that can cause this is when the kite suddenly shoots forward in the window. Now, when that, that can happen because you maybe you've backstalled the kite, you know, maybe just, just again, pilot errors cause the kite to be sat at that point back in the window where it really doesn't like to be. And so it tends to then shoot out the window and it can overextend the window. It can shoot past the window. Now, if that happens over your head and it shoots over your head, it's now outside the wind window, it is just gonna collapse. So what you need to think about is if the kite is suddenly just shooting up, rather than letting it finish and shoot over your head, 
steer it out. So the kite follows, you know, it swoops around to either side as it comes up. So rather than finishing, using all its energy and ending up over and behind you, as it's coming up over you, you steer it out to the side and let it expend its energy to the side, but so it stays in the window. Now that in itself is a really useful way to do it. Let's say you, you know, you've got a kite that can't, you cannot adjust, it does front stall, it's a kite that's prone to front stalling, then this is gonna happen naturally. So by steering it out at the sides, you can stop it from happening. The other one, the other classic is, you know, you're getting the board on your feet, the kite's above your head. Rather than having it above your head, have it at kind of 11, half past 10, or on the other side, you know, two o'clock, something like that. So it's not above your head. So if it does tend to fall, it will fall sideways rather than up, which then gives you a chance, sorry, rather than down, which then gives you a chance to relaunch from the side of the window. So as you can see, there's quite a lot of different aspects going into this. Um, so it's not, it's not as easy as saying, oh, it's this one thing. It could be an awful lot of things. But top tips, if you're finding that it's front stalling a lot, is to summarise, try and have the kite above your head as little as possible, 45 degrees, when you're water starting, when you're on the beach, whatever, get it down there so it falls downwards so you can relaunch rather than on top of you. When you, you're then buggered, you've got to go back in and restart the whole thing. Look at your kite. Is your kite a high aspect kite? Maybe change it for low aspect kite if you possibly can and make those movements smoother on the bar to stop the kite being twisted quite so much. Okay guys, hope that made sense. If you are interested, we are running a special course which is designed to knock weeks off your time learning to kite surf and save you hundreds, if not thousands, on your kite surfing lessons. There's a link in the video below this. It might also be popping up somewhere around this video depending on where you're watching. Click the link, you'll be taken over to another video which explains exactly what the course is, what it's involved and how you can get involved in it. I would love to see you on the inside. Speak to you soon guys. As always, if you like that video, don't forget to click like and subscribe and I'll speak to you soon.